Coach Anderson, special episode. You and I tonight coming from two unique places. I am in my classroom at Riverside High School. I got parent conferences starting here. Um, we're on a short leash tonight because I got these conferences starting soon. I'm in the in-between time between the end of school. And the you are in the wrestling room at Kent State. Show everybody what the wrestling room at Kent State looks like. Yeah, you want to see the wrestling room? Yeah, show them. And this is right after practice, right? We just got done with practice, the guys. Just getting a little extra work in. So you got guys. Doing I'm extra here, things. so I can hear you better. Okay, got some extras going on right now. Guys are getting some extra work in. The yeah, extra. Work. We got two groups going nowadays because our team is a little bigger. So we do one at uh, one at like um, started like twelve fifteen. It goes until two, and then two o'clock until right now. So you you have to split practices. Is that something that you carried over from COVID? Well, it's because our roster, you know, the, the university, when they when they brought back us to normal, you know, as normal as we're ever going to get, they wanted us to have a bigger roster. So our roster is around 40, 44 people right now. And because of that, we, uh, we can't have 45 guys in our room at one time. So we do a little split practice action. You Will you keep 44 or do you got to cut down to a certain number? No, we can keep 44. Um, we don't have to cut down, which we've always had to cut down to a certain number. We're good with whatever. They're trying to use uh, – Athletics to help our enrollment. So it's it's in a the athletic the sports programs here at Ken are going to help our enrollment. Something I would think you would know. There's less high school students now than there's ever been, and if there's less high school students, that means less kids going to college. So all these universities have built these these systems up to handle 55, 60 thousand kids, and now all of a sudden we're going to have less. So they're trying to get ahead of the curve a little bit by keeping uh, keep you know keeping our rosters a little bigger. It makes a little more work for us, but I'm all right with that. Okay, right now, Kent State's the second largest school in the state of Ohio to Ohio State, correct? That is correct. We're about, we're about 53,000 students in, in, along with our branch campuses, yes. 40,000 on the main campus is what I saw on Google. Yeah, it's probably not quite that many. Or maybe it was graduate students it's around there, but it's real close. Between, between 38 and 40. So yep. unique setting tonight. I like a little unique setting. Um, I wish we had the earbuds for you, man. It would be better. But but um, I can hear you well in my classroom. Um, Kent State Wrestling Talk. What's the feedback you're getting so far? What did you get? What feedback did you get on the Jake and Jake show? Having Jake and Jake on. What feedback have you gotten so far about what we're doing here on the Kent State Wrestling Talk here uh, weekly to biweekly? Well. You know, the, the Jake and Jake show, show seems to be a pretty popular thing around our university. I don't know how much our alumni are actually opening up and clicking on it, but I know within our university and within our athletic department, it's a pretty big deal and people like it. I was actually at an event this last week and I had a, a guy that uh, um, sent him, stopped me and said, I love the Jake and Jake show. So there's a lot of things like that where, you know, I'm hearing it. As far as the, the podcast, I think that every day, we every time we do another one, we gain another person that, that, that wants to follow Kent State Wrestling. So it's one of those things, I like guess it's a, it's a work in progress for us, but you know, we do, you do a lot of these things with people all the time. Me and you are just doing a little bit, a little bit more regular of a schedule and hopefully it can get all the alumni people or the people that are interested in Kent State a little bit more information on, on what we're doing on a, on a weekly, bi-weekly basis, bi-monthly basis, I should say. Well, I do got to point a couple of things out for you. In the background here, we got a Kent State poster Yep. I can tell it's the one where Ian, Ian's back, his, his hand's getting raised, and he's dumping Tassari on his head in yep. one, of, one of these pictures. And Sam Wheeler's dumping a Cleveland State guy on his head. And then yep. I got the Kilgore one. The Kilgore right one, there. you guys face off. So I just want to know that I'm representing here in my classroom on a daily. And then there's another one over there in the corner with Michael DePalma, Mac McGuire, and Ian on it. And I got some Edinburgh and Ohio State stuff, too. I got Nick Hefflin. I like Nick. Nick Hefflin's a good guy. You do so, a few degrees from Kent State, so, you know, you're just doing what you're supposed to be doing. Supposed to be doing that, right? got to pr promote it. And then I got these lights. Do you see the lights? I do. I, do. The I like I, that. Listen, the disclaimer, Lat's teacher left them in here, and he hung them really well. So I'm not going to – I'm going to use the lights. Um, when I have them red and green, they're always like, what, why red and green, Mr. Miller? I'm like, well, because that's my high school's colors. They're like, no, those are Christmas colors. I said, yes, and my high school's colors. On top of that, are pretty funny stories. So about uh, about maybe two weeks ago, we were talking about our locker room and keeping it clean. And Enrique raised his hand and asked if we could get some of those lights that you have in our locker room behind our lockers to make, you know, to kind of give a, a special appearance. 
and I told him I'd look into it. And I haven't. And that, that made me think of Enrique. They're they're not expensive. I don't know what this dude paid for these with this teacher that moved out of this room, but um, yeah, I mean it, it's uh, it's it's really cool. I'm not gonna lie to you, because like I get the morning sun because I'm on the east side right here. This is the east end of the the building here at Riverside. The football stadium's right there. I could sit in my room right here and watch the football game. The football, the football team's go. practicing out here right now. They play Hudson this week in a big uh, regional semi. Okay. And um, we're in that Hoban region. I don't know if Hoban's the best team in Ohio, has been for the last yep. six or seven years. We're in that region, and Riverside's got a really good team this year. So I'm kind of excited about that, but I'm watching them practice right now. And, Jim, how did I get this job? One of your, high, your college teammates, Scott Blank, emailed you, and that was the connection here at Riverside. So thank you, Jim. And then, you know, you, you have a guy – there was a guy that was a wrestling guy that was like a superintendent, wasn't it? At uh, some point here? We had, I mean, we've had a bunch of people that have come and gone as our central. Who was principal at one point? Was What's there that? A wrestler, principal? Rich Frimmel. Rich Frimmel is, is, is my boss. As a matter of fact, there's Rich Frimmel right now. There's an announcement right now coming on the announcement. Um, Rich Frimmel's actually right there with a mullet on the cover of the Scarlet and Gray magazine with his Ohio State team. He was a okay. state champ for uh, North Olmsted and Tom Milkovich. There you go. There you go. Oh, so you are right. Yes. Rich is still my boss. And then there he is with a sick mullet. Okay. So just real quick, um, after we get all the small talk out of the way, we're on a short leash tonight. We're at 13 minutes left, Jim. For Kent State Wrestling Talk, we want to push results through here. We want to keep uh, people in the loop of what's going on with the season. It's, you know, it's November. I did my first event. I was at Lake Erie College and John Carroll. Um, that's D2, D3. What D1 event were you guys at this past weekend for Kent State Wrestling? We sent about half our guys to the Clarion Open. And when I say half the guys, we didn't send we, – we, we, we're going to have a very older team this year. When I say older, we're going to probably have eight to nine seniors starting. Um, with that, I kind of gave them the option of wrestling or not wrestling because the season's so long. And these guys are – they're older. They get it. They understand it. They they understand the importance of, of a season and, and, you know, knowing where you have to wrestle better and how some of these early tournaments aren't quite as important. So – out of the who I believe the 10 starters are, nine of them said they wanted to stay back and not wrestle. The one guy that did wrestle was Enrique. Um, Enrique Munga. It's Mungia. Hold on. Mungia. Hold on. Mungia. Mungia. The dad Mungia. is Mungia. Mungia. on multiple occasions. The dad is super proud of it. Dad to Cleveland police officer. Shout out to Enrique's dad, Mr. Mungia. It's Mungia. Okay. Mungia. Enrique, I, Mungia. And he's, hey, he's ranked now, by the way. He's ranked. Yes. And I, I actually just did a horrible job with the last pronouncement, but you said it correctly. And he's the only one who wrestled, and he actually had a really, really good tournament. Um, hold on, hold on. He's the only starter that wrestled. Only starter that wrestled, yes. You had a yes. bunch of younger kids and freshmen, red, red, red second year, because you can't send true freshmen to it, right? Well, we said we took all our freshmen to this. This was they one of our five events. events. Five events, okay. So, so they took every go. freshman that was allowed to go. We had some guys that, you know, to be, to, to, I'm one of those guys that wears it on my sleeve. We had to suspend some kids for doing some things that they shouldn't have been. We had uh, about four or five kids that had some skin fungus that they came up with. So we had about seven or eight guys that just didn't go because of other reasons that are young. Um, but uh, all in all, you know, we, we took them there. Enrique did the best. Uh, I don't think we had anyone go better than two and two. And this one was actually a pretty tough tournament for a bunch of freshmen. Um, you know, it makes me think, hey, should we be going to the Michigan State Open where there's a freshman sophomore division in the future? With the new rules, it's something we have to really, you know, figure out what the best thing to do is. So, it was a learning experience, a really eye opener for some of our younger guys. Did Enrique wrestle uh, four matches, Jim? Yes, he did. Four and zero. Oh. Four and zero. Oh. Yep. And he's yep. up a weight this year. Enrique Mungia was a top ten recruit, and you know you got to put Enrique in there with the Dustin Kilgore, Nick Bedleyon, Keith Witt, Ian Miller, Mikey De Palma, Ty Barlow. Well, Mike Barlow, yeah, all those, those guys, guys yeah. are all top 10 recruits. So to be fair, Enrique Munguia is in that. He's in that. That I feel comfortable putting him in that, in that, that, uh, you know, Danny Mitchell. I feel comfortable in putting him in that, those names with those names. Yep. I, I agree with you. He, he's one of those guys that uh, I agree should be in that category. And, you know, he's, he's a second year guy and he went to the tournament and had a, just, he wrestled really, really solid. Um, he's hard to handle, man. When, when he's at full strength and he wasn't sucking away like he was last year, he's a really, really hard. He's hard to, understand how he wrestles he isn't your typical wrestler which people are finding out super unorthodox comfortable and over-unders 
I watch yep. his dad streams all of his dad's awesome. I'll tell you what, best Facebook friend ever. I believe it's Carlos, right? I think yeah. it's Carlos. He is the guy is the freaking man, and he he videos all of his matches. Yeah, it's Carlos Carlos Munguia, Cleveland police officer. I watch all of his stuff. Whatever he puts him on, there, he calls him the champ. And he did. He, he got cut off at one point, and he always finds a way to get the matches, and they're on there. So be friends okay. with Carlos Munguia on Facebook if you want to watch Enrique's super unorthodox, crazy, funky kitchen sink style. And what I will do is I will go back before we post this. I will put on his Facebook page on our when we send it out a little, you know, letting God people know that they can look at us if they want to watch his matches because you can actually go to track wrestling and watch them. But maybe it might be a little more interesting, kind of like you do watching uh, the father's, you know, phone camera doing it, which I, I love it. I love it. And he's, he's into it and he's, and, you know, he's nervous watching his kid, but he's real steady handed, does a nice job. Doesn't have a tripod or anything, but he does a nice job. But yep. Jim, you did something really interesting with Enrique last year. You bumped him up to like 84 after he couldn't make 57 anymore. You bumped him up. We're like, hey, go out and try and wrestle 84, right? That's correct. Hindsight, probably a mistake. Probably. Probably, probably. right? Oh, yeah. It was a he hurts his shoulder against uh, Central Michigan. It ends the season. But now he's back at 65. He's massive for the weight. And yep. he's, he's starting out. And he's in the top 33. He's a guy that we should see in Tulsa, Oklahoma in 2023 for the NCAA tournament. He's, he establishes himself right out of the gate. How huge is getting ranked early on in the season for you guys? I think with a school like us, with our guys, you know, you go to these tournaments and there, I think he wrestled some starters there, but there, a lot of the starters weren't there. With that being said, if you can get ranked and like, you know, we're going to Navy now, he's going to wrestle a bunch of, bunch of really good guys. Again, we're going to Appy state. I mean, we're going to wrestle a bunch of good guys. If he can win that turn, win two tournaments. Now, since he has a lot of good wins under him, it's really hard to get unranked once you're ranked. That's the, that's the, I don't want to call it the beauty of it. That's the hard thing with rankings. Once you're in them, it's hard to get knocked out. If you're not in them, it's hard to get in unless you upset a few guys, you know, multiple weeks back to back. What is the outlook coming up for App State, the Mountaineer uh, Invitational, I believe it is? Um, no Arizona State. App State's going to be there. And then you told me Stanford's going to be there. Who else can we see you guys wrestle Virginia. at App State? Virginia. UVA's tougher nails. Um, OU is going to be there. Edinburgh is going to be there. Us. Some um, action. Some, there's some there's action. Some, yeah, there's going to be some, some uh, Siddles going to be there, I believe. Um, okay. I only think there's like seven teams there. You're allowed to bring in 15 guys. So, you know, we'll have 15 guys in that tournament. And they're also running a open tournament right along with it. And we'll take about – right now we have about 12 guys going to the open tournament. So we'll have about 27 guys in action this year, this week. So you're going to take a, a, a big – uh, entourage uh, down to Boone, North Carolina. Obviously, you know, Boone is, uh, I love the, the Mountaineers. And uh, they just wrestled yep. NC State real tough, 6-4, six, six matches to four. Uh, NC State got bonus, pinned them a couple times. But you know that they're tough, right? You know they're tough. You know yep. Stanford's guys are tough and smart. And you know, obviously, what you're going to deal with with Edinburgh and Ohio U, rivals of, of in MAC with you guys. Um, Citadel, you probably don't see too much, right? But they're a SoCon team. But UVA, right? UVA, I, I believe they had some guys. Um, they're usually at Clarion. I don't know if they were this year. No, they weren't. They weren't this year, but they usually are. But um, knowing the slate you guys have and the guys you got going in, um, how good do you feel? Do you feel like you guys can bring some titles home from uh, Boone, North Carolina? Well, at least we're taking our whole roster. Um, so our, 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 our starting, who I believe our starting guys, I think maybe, well, it's not true. At 157, we, we have Aaron um, Ferguson slated to be our starter. He's coming back from a knee surgery. Um, he'll probably be back to practice next Monday, but we don't believe taking him to Navy is the first, you know, he'll be practicing finally by next Monday. Navy probably will not be his first competition. I don't think we'll send him to Vegas. There's another tournament the week of Vegas. We'll probably send him to that. But besides that, we'll have, you know, nine of the guys, nine of our starters will be at this event. And I, I don't, you know, winning a title is the most important thing. Going there, getting quality matches, Finding out where we're at, you know, as far as our conditioning, you know, where we are strength-wise, where we're at, just you know, how competitive we are as a team. So we kind of know where to where to go with our practices from here. We've been doing this for since since August. You've been we've been doing this late August. Now it's time to really get to see our team and f figure out what we do well, what we need to continue working on things that you know things that just we can improve on. Usually, you can tell by a, just watching your team 
And if one guy is not the best at it, usually the other guys aren't the best at it too. So it's something you can kind of get a sense of, all right, this is what we need to work on moving forward, or, or this is where we're doing really well. We always struggle at the top and bottom beginning of the year. Um, and it's something that we go to these tournaments. We, uh, yeah, we, we got to work. We got to do better top and bottom. We'll spend a lot more time. We'll get ready for the Vegas. We'll do better down, out in Vegas at the top and bottom. But that's usually what happens. When you guys get to see a team like Stanford and Coach Cole, obviously they're they're super well coached. You don't get to see those guys that often. Maybe in Vegas, you won't see them again after it may be Vegas, right? Vegas would be the only time. I don't even know if they're at Vegas, but like that's the only time you even see like a West Coast team like Stanford, right? Is that good yeah. to for you guys to run into them early, like a someone like a Jake Ferry to run into somebody earlier, a Mungia five yeah. national champ, right? Yeah. They, well, um, Stanford has a really good freshman at 125, who, you know, who um, Rob Cole thinks is pretty special. So that'll be a, a very good opportunity for Jake to see how he does against a freshman and also see where that freshman's at and, you know, where he'll be in the mix of things. Um, I don't decide who goes to this tournament. We just, it's an easy tournament for us to get to. You get to see a little bit of the Southern teams as well. If you kind of look at where we're at, you know, next week we go to Naval Academy. You get a lot of the East Coast teams. After that, we go to, uh, we go to, Vegas. We get to see a lot of the West Coast teams. We always have gone to to uh, Virginia Duels just because usually we get to see two or three, maybe four um, Power Five schools. And then after that, we were pretty much into our conference schedule. So if you kind of look, we try to hit all the main areas that we can. We're going to see teams that we normally wouldn't see. And th there is a madness behind our schedule. I just don't, you know, sign us up for tournaments and go places without actually putting some thought into it. So this is one of those things where hopefully we're going to see some Southern teams. Stanford's coming out. With having less guys or less teams at the tournament, there's a better chance to see a guy like Stanford. You go to the Vegas, and there's about 40 different teams there. So your chances of seeing a Stanford guy might not be that that good, where you'll probably get to see him if you're a decent guy and, and they have a decent guy at this tournament. Somewhere or another, you get to see him. Enrique is going to be the fifth top 33 ranked wrestler. He's the 33rd. Jordan Slipka of Ohio U. And then you've got Will Fermato at State. You've got Justin McCoy, University of Virginia. You've got Shane Griffith of Stanford, the number two guy national champion two years ago. So 165 is probably going to be a good way to watch at the uh, Mountaineer uh, invite this weekend. Coach, got to talk crowd, crowdfunding with you guys and, and, and uh, fundraising for Ohio, uh, Kent State University, what you guys are doing. We're on the two-minute clock right now. Two-minute warning, Coach. Talk to me about crowdfunding for Kent State Wrestling and raising funds. Crowdfunding is our biggest, it's our biggest fundraising campaign. We kind of go out and, and we do like a, a, the grassroots of, of, of fundraising. You go out and try to find as many people to give a small amount of money. And then, you know, you get a lot of people, it's, it's like a village. You get a whole village to give money or a village to do work. Rather than just try and find the, the, the bigger donors that just give bigger amounts, we go out and we ask every one of our athletes to, uh, to try to find at least 10 to 15 guys that are going to give $25. Then we do it on a certain day where it's either doubled or, you know, you get 25 unique donations, you get a $500 boost, or we'll do it on a day where uh, maybe if we get the most out of the university, they give us a $5,000 bonus. So we try to figure out how to do it so we can make the most of our money. Um, we've had a lot of success with this, and this is every program in the, in the university. So this is in athletics. Every program in the university does this or has the opportunity to do it. Last year, we had about 45 different programs on the campus that did it, and we had the most unique donors, and we also had the most money fundraised. The year before that, they didn't do it for COVID for two years. The year before that, we had the most, most unique donors. We had the second most money raised. The year before that, the year before that, we we won it. We had the most money and most you know, unique donors. So over the last five years of doing this, we've dominated with unique donors. It's mainly because of our student athletes. And if you add it all up over the five years, we've raised more money than than the majority of programs added up. We've been that high. So it's just what we it's what we put our effort into as far as fundraising. The university gets behind it. So we have the university's help. They send out a lot of information um, and we're going to start getting a lot of stuff out here. But if you're a person that's just interested in, in, uh, in helping Kent State Wrestling, go to, uh, on the Giving Tuesday, go to, um, which is, I, I believe this year, it's November 23rd. You go to Kent State University crowdfunding, look up wrestling, and you can make a donation of $25. And if you do it at the right time, it could turn into $50, possibly $63. So that's kind of how we do it. Coach, we're under a minute left. What happened to your eyes? You got like a, a one here and one here. What happened to your eyes? I actually have, I had, um, <laughs> I have, I guess you call them skin tags that were getting to the point where they need to be, they needed to be removed. 
for testing they purposes. Surgery. They had a surgery. Yeah, little ones. They just take them off. They test them. Um, my mom has had skin cancer before, so it's one of those things we, you know, we can keep track of it in our family. Got it. Coach, I'm last thing, Enrique was, the, Enrique was the fifth seed at the 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 Clarion. So I'm expecting not, you know, not saying he's going to win this tournament, but I'm, I'm expecting him to be much better than the fifth seed. Coach, you got anything else for me? We're just at about four o'clock here. I got to go. Do you got anything else for me? That's it. We'll be coming back to you probably after uh, maybe before Thanksgiving or, or right before Nate, uh, right before Vegas. Me and you will figure that out, but everyone help you. If we don't talk to you, have a great Thanksgiving. Um, crowdfunding, Kent State University Wrestling, help us out and just follow along. We love that. We love, we love do. I love doing this. I hope our, our alumni and the people that follow us love it too. Do you think Bill Drypolcher and Nick Nemeth love giving to Kent State Wrestling? I think they do. I'm, ho I'm hoping they do. Bill Trifles was given a few times already this year, but Nick really, really helped us out last year. Um, you don't want to go to the well too often, too many times, but we're going to call Nick and hope he can do a lot. Yeah, you know, he's, he's been, he's a very successful guy. He's been doing great. And he's a guy that he represents Kent state all the time. We love having him in our corner. Got to get Lensman. Lensman's the guy who's got to give. He's son. He's selling farm loans. I think he's got money. Single guy. Mark Mark Lensman's got to start giving more money. And Chad Lensman's the superintendent of Graham Schools. Did you know that? All right, well, both those guys are going to be on the list. Hopefully they're watching, so they'll be expecting the call. Coach, thank you for the time. We will catch up with you later. I got to go grab some uh, food before these parent-teacher conferences, Coach. You got it. Thank you, Zeb. Talk to you soon.